Uncle Mrs. Jones, that just about does it. The doctor will be in to see you shortly. Thanks, thanks. Oh, good afternoon, Miss Jones. I'm Dr. Smith. Hi, hi. It's great to see you. How are you, you doing today? Oh, I'm so glad to be able to see you. I've, I've been having a bad problem with shortness of breath when I exercise, and I've had all these tests, and I know they didn't come back good, because I can just tell by people's reactions that something's wrong, so I've been trying forever to get in to see you, so I'm really excited about the answers that you're going to be able to give me today. Well, actually, I have your test results right here. Uh, your case is really quite straightforward. Uh, you have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, okay. which is a cardiac condition in which the uh, heart muscle is increased in thickness and the heart contracts excessively. Okay. Um, because of this extreme hypertrophy, when you uh, exercise, your filling pressures go up rapidly and you have dyspnea. Pretty straightforward. Yeah. All right. Um, so then what's my outlook with this condition? Prognosis is highly variable. Um, average life expectancy after diagnosis is about 17.8 years. Um, so not bad. And uh, some patients, however, experience sudden death uh, without warning. Sudden death? Okay, so if I understand the first part, you told me I could live on an average of 10 years, but I might drop dead tomorrow? Exactly. I'm so glad you understand. Um, yes. Um, so, are there any treatment options? Uh, yes. Actually, there's four different treatment options. Um, first, we could put in uh, you on medication. And uh, okay. the medication, of course, could have side effects, but it might help your symptoms. It wouldn't do anything for your survival curve. Uh, okay. The other the next approach would be to put in a pacemaker and that might improve your contraction sequence and promote your forward cardiac output in a positive direction and reduce your preload, therefore improving your dyspnea. But again, that wouldn't really affect your, your long-term prognosis or survival. Um, the next approach is surgery. Well, we could send you for cardiac surgery and do a left ventricular myectomy and uh, that would be a surgery that would possibly improve your symptoms but again wouldn't do anything for your survival curve. And lastly we could put in a special pacemaker called an internal defibrillator that uh, would shock your heart rhythm out of a lethal abnormality if needed. Uh, and that would actually probably prolong your life if you fell into a high-risk group. Um, so that's sort of the breakdown of the options, and we need to decide which one of those you're going to pick. Um, which one do you think sounds best to you? Well, they, they all sound pretty serious, and nothing helps my life expectancy and, and lo except for that last one, which was sounded like surgery. Um, do I have to make a decision today? Uh, no, but, uh, you know, I'm running behind, so you think about it, and uh, I have to go see another patient, and then let me know uh, when you decide what you want to do. Uh, it's good, good talking to you. Yeah, thanks. Well, Mrs. Jones, we're all set with you today. Do you have any questions? Do you understand everything the doctor told you today? I don't even know where to start. I, I don't think I understand anything he told me today. 
In our first scenario, Dr. Smith shows little empathy for Mrs. Jones, ignoring her the moment he enters the room, immediately giving attention to his computer and forgoing eye contact with the patient. His prognosis is quite jarring, and he uses language so complex the patient quickly loses understanding. Dr. Smith closes the conversation without ensuring she understands her condition or the treatment options. He even presses her for a near-immediate decision on which treatment she'd like. Watch now as Dr. Smith exercises a more patient-friendly approach using plain language and teach back to verify patient understanding. Well, Mrs. Jones, it looks like I'm all set for now. The doctor will be in to see you shortly. Great, Great thank you. Go. Good afternoon, Mrs. Jones. I'm Dr. Hi. Smith. Hi. It's nice to see you. Great, it's so nice to finally meet you. Been waiting a long time to get this appointment. Well, <sighs> it's good to meet you too. Here you are. Yeah, I'll tell you. I've been having a lot of problems with the shortness of breath when I exercise, and I've had so many tests. Um, and I know that they're not coming back so good because nobody will give me an answer. They keep saying that I have to wait to talk to you. So, hoping you'll have some answers for me. Well, of course, I have your test results right here. Okay. And uh, you do have a condition with your heart that we need to talk about. Well, lay it on me. What's the problem? The medical name for it is called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, which is a fancy term for basically meaning that your heart has gotten too strong. So I thought it was a good thing to have a strong heart and not a weak one, but you're telling me that having a strong heart is a problem? Of course, a weak heart is not a good thing either. But okay. you need to think of it sort of like a weightlifter who gets muscle bound. Sometimes they're so muscle bound they can't bend or touch the floor. Okay. Uh, so when your heart doesn't relax, it affects the ability of your heart to pump blood forward in the right direction. Okay. And that causes things to back up into your lungs. And when that happens, you get shorter breath. I think I understand that. So what's my outlook for this problem? Well, there's several ways to go on this. Okay. Um, you know, first of all, there's medications that help with the symptoms that make you feel better. Um, but one of the worries about this condition is that sometimes there can be electrical problems that can occur suddenly. So before we really start treating you, we need to see if you're at risk to have any kind of sudden electrical problem with your heart. So how will I know if I'm going to live long with this condition? Or am I not so lucky? You know, if you're in a high-risk group, uh, we can always put in a device called an implantable defibrillator that will give your heart a little shock if it goes into some kind of lethal kind of arrhythmia or heart rhythm problem. Okay. And uh, that will bring you back and save your life and then uh, you'll be fine. Okay. So what do I have to do today? Well, I'm going to leave a prescription for you at the front desk. Okay. And the MA will come in and get you hooked up to a Holter monitor, which is a recording of your heart rhythm. Okay. From that, we can tell if you're at risk for a sudden cardiac problem. Okay. If you come out to be at risk, we'll schedule you for a defibrillator. If you're not at risk, we'll just put you on medication and you should do fine for many years. Thanks, doctor. It was so nice meeting you. I feel so much better. Thank you. Now, before I leave, I just want to make sure I've explained this clearly so you understand it. So can you repeat back to me what I explained to you? You told me that I have a condition where I have, my heart is too strong, which means that it's not filling up properly, and that's what's causing my shortness of breath when I exercise. So what we're going to do today is you're going to give me a medication, and the MA is going to come in and fit me with a halter, and depending on that test, I might have to get a defibrillator. Um, but I'm not going to need surgery, and I feel so much better about that. I don't know, did I get everything right? You had it all perfect, and I think you understand it. So, uh, I'm, Great. I think you're going to do fine. All right, good, good. Thank you so much. So uh, the MA will be in to hook you up. You'll okay. get your prescription at the front desk. It was great meeting you. Great. Thank you so much. Good Thank luck. you. Great. Okay. So, Mrs. Jones, how did it go? Oh, I feel so much better. Well, it'll be okay. It looks like he wants me to hook you up with a halter. Okay. 
so I can do that for you right now. Great, thank you. In our second scenario, Dr. Smith shares considerable care and empathy with Mrs. Jones, even sterilizing his hands before shaking hers. He listens to questions and, after consulting his computer, pulls his chair to where he might face her. Dr. Smith takes careful time when sharing his prognosis and explains in more understandable terms her condition. Finally, he presses her for her understanding of her condition, her treatment options, and affords her time to consider them. 